Hi everyone, it's James here. Welcome to another video. And this is going to be a finds video, the first one for, I think, about two months. So, um, a couple of reasons why it's been so long. We've moved house and uh, that was a huge upheaval, as you can imagine. First time we've moved for many years. So, um, you know, just moving boxes of records from one house to the next, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of records, looking at them just thinking, you know, do I, do I need to buy any more records ever again? But uh, anyway, so I finally did uh, get all that uh, done and uh, I've been without my hi-fi as well. I'd left that in the other house. I've only just managed to set that up in the last uh, week or so. So I've been playing records again. And I did finally decide to go out digging and I've been out now two or three times. So I've amassed a few records here and there, which I'd like to share with you. Uh, the first two today I want to show you, uh, they're from a great little shop called Moonlight Records in Wrexham, which is a shop I haven't been into for many, many years. I used to shop in there, I used to go record shopping in there when I was a teenager, but I mean it's been so many years since I went in. There's a variety of reasons for that, I won't bore you with them, but um, it's a great little shop and it really hasn't changed much at all. Walking through the door, it was like stepping back in time really, stepping back along my own timeline. He has some great stuff in there, the prices actually are pretty good, uh, and uh, um, he's got his more expensive side as well, but uh, I certainly found some, some nice things. The two that I've got to show you today, they're not particularly exciting or anything. I have been back since and I bought some, some really nice stuff actually, but I won't be showing those until... Uh, until after Christmas actually because they're going to be um, a Christmas present to me uh, from my mother <laughs> so uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, keep those back. These two that I'll show you now they're just cheap and cheerful finds so I picked up a copy of Robert Palmer Riptide which was his big big huge successful commercial breakthrough album from 1986 or 7 this is the record that's got um, addicted to love on it and if you know that song and of course you do you'll know what this record sounds like um, so this features this was produced by let me just get the in or out so I don't get things wrong yeah, produced by Bernard Edwards from Chic, of course, who'd been working with, with um, Robert anyway in his own band, uh, in um, Robert's band. You've also got uh, Andy Taylor here, formerly of Duran Duran, who'd also been working with, um, with Robert Palmer. Tony Thompson from, from Chic and um, um, on drums. Guy Pratt on bass, who went on to be in David Gilmour's reconstituted Pink Floyd. So a great lineup of musicians and some really good material actually it's I did enjoy this record you have to kind of go with it that very kind of almost aggressively sculpted 80s sound extremely loud bombastic drums but good pop hooks I do like Robert Palmer's voice it, it has a certain warmth and uh, charisma to it you know I started picking up his earlier records and I thought maybe I wouldn't I wouldn't go any further into the big commercial period but having heard this record I'm starting to wonder now, you know, am I on a Robert Palmer slippery slope? I'm going to have to get everything, but we'll see uh, on the beautiful island label. And got a big buzzy fly in here at the moment, so hoping that's not going to make too many um, buzzes for you. Uh, this one, really nice comp. I picked this up as well from Wrexham. Never seen this on, on vinyl before. Grace Jones, Island Life, with a very fetching cover. And um, this rounds up some of the hits that she'd had on Island in the 80s. You've got, well, I mean, the big song in here, the really huge song is Slave to the Rhythm, uh, which was her magnum opus, I guess. That's on the end of side two. But you've also got Pull Up to the Bumper as well, which was on, was it on Night Clubbing. So uh, good track lists, some nice informative liner notes on the back. And then you have this quite nice gatefold. Uh, cover which contains lots of pictures of Grace's um, albums and various publicity shots and uh, yeah again this one is is on the beautiful white island label so I didn't pay much for this it was only it was probably a five or less but I thought that would be quite a nice thing to get into the collection so yeah two finds there from um, Moonlight Records in Wrexham open Thursdays Fridays and Saturdays 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. so if you're in the North Wales area the Wrexham area do pay him a call uh, the cat is now trying to kill the fly I think I'm gonna try and get rid of the fly just wait one moment right the fly has been disposed of it's not dead it's outside 
Okay, so I'm going to show you one record from Heightside Records, which is my local market traders uh, here in Lancaster. Well, they're not from Lancaster, but they come here from West Yorkshire every Saturday. And then I'll show you two records from Oxfam, and I've saved the best two till last week. The two Oxfam fan, the two Oxfam finds are uh, are really nice. But um, I picked this up from. Uh, Heightside Records, this is Traffic, The Low Spark of High Heel Boys, a record that I keep seeing about the place but it's always shot to pieces, shot to hell. Unfortunately this is a slightly later British reissue which does not have the die cut sleeve, had a very clever die cut sleeve of course this record which made it look like a cube, uh, but it's it's not that version unfortunately but on the plus side it's in really good nick so um, couldn't really resist it. So. Uh, yeah, nice to get this one into the collection, and we are now on the later Blue Island label. There we go. And um, yeah, Traffic is a band that I've kind of skirted around over the years with ever quite properly getting my teeth into them. I've got a couple of their records on CD. I've got John Barleycorn and Mr. Fantasy, neither of which have ever massively grabbed me. I do like them, but I'm not kind of crazy about either of them. This record on first listening sounds like it could be the one. It's got a lovely, vibey, jazzy kind of sound to it. Um, very full sound actually. Steve Winwood's vocals are in fine form, so um, I'm hoping that this is going to be the one that finally clues me into traffic properly. Um, quite a lot of long tracks. Uh, the title track, The Low Spark of High Heel Boys, runs at 12 minutes and 10 seconds, so it definitely has that um, progressive, out in the country, bucolic, slightly psychedelic kind of feel uh, with some great jazzy chops. So, um, yeah, good thing. It was only cheap, wasn't expensive, and it was in good nick. So, the final two are, are I've saved till last. These two, I mean, they are quite spectacular finds really, both from Oxfam, not the kind of things I would usually find in Oxfam. This first one, a record I did used to see in charity shops years ago, back in my Leeds days, and I, I always kicked myself that I never picked it up because back then it was a record and a band that were quite common in charity shops and then all of a sudden that, well, gradually that changed and uh, now I just never see, never see their records in Oxfam. Or charity shops. So this was this was a real kind of spectacular. Wow! Look at that moment, really, uh, in Oxfam. XTC Oranges and Lemons from 1989. This is the record that really started to break them a little bit in America. Uh, contained Colin Melding's great song King for a Day, and um, it just had a really great sparkling psychedelic production. The first track I played this the other day when I set up my hi-fi. It was the second. I think it was the second record I put on, and it just pinned me back. In my chair, it was incredible. The Garden of Earthly Delights, with this really, really spectacular production. You know, a million things happening at once, but um, somehow it's made to work. Um, very spectacular musicianship. Great guitar playing from Dave Gregory. This is definitely one of their one of their better albums, I'd say. It does slightly suffer from an 80s production, but most of the XTC albums did really. In all honesty, they were a band that um, did really come up in the 80s, do most of their their important work in the 80s, so you kind of, you know, that's that's built in really to the experience, but certainly a fantastic thing to find. I only need now a couple of records on vinyl from the original run. It's nice that it was a um, original copy as well rather than a reissue, because the XTC albums have been reissued in recent years. I've not bought any of the reissues, so uh, trying to hold out for the originals. So on Virgin Records, of course, XTC, Oranges and Lemons. And the final thing to show you also on Virgin Records, and this is definitely not the kind of thing I would ever have expected to find in a charity shop, particularly for the price. I mean, you know, the stuff they've got down there, they've got some quite expensive things down there. This was only £10. There is a very small scratch on it, but uh, it's not anything that's going to give my stylus too much cause for concern. So get a load of this. This is the Faust Tapes. And uh, yeah, £10 from Oxfam. And uh, it was a sort of double take moment, really. I looked at it and thought, is that what I think it is? Because the cover art is quite famous. It's uh, a succession of uh, reviews from the band's contemporaneous career at the time. I think they're all from 1972. You've got a sounds review, a disc review from 72, The Enemy. 
Um, not the only album in history to feature written text on it like that. In fact, um, XTC had one, didn't they? They had uh, their second album uh, has a quite a similar thing. Thick as a Brick uh, by Jethro Tull does it. There's a Steve Gibbons live album that does it. So uh, not sure who did it first. Great painting on the rear, one of those sort of optical illusion paintings, Crest by Bridget Riley, one of those pictures that you look at for a while and then your eyes start to go funny. And this one is on a really, really beautiful, uh, I'm going to say maybe early Virgin label. It's, um, it's very kind of unadorned, white, uh, monochrome, uh, one track per side, and... Um, yeah, not the easiest music to get into. Um, Faust, I suppose, you know, classic progressive German kraut rock. They're definitely quite experimental, quite abrasive. They've got their own way of doing things. Uh, I was never as into them as I was into Can, whose music I have, you know, enjoyed a lot over the years. But I couldn't, I couldn't leave this behind for ten pounds. And uh, I'm hoping now, having got it on vinyl, I can wrestle it to the ground, you know, get to grips with it. So. Yeah, there we go, the Faust tapes, and um, a very cool thing to find unexpectedly in a charity shop. So that's it for now, I'll just show you those five records. I've got some online purchases that I need to show, and um, a second haul, like I said before, a second haul from Moonlight Records, but I'll, I'll be showing those, possibly not until, uh, until after Christmas actually, so we'll see about that. Quick channel shout out before I go, I've probably flushed flashed up a picture already at the start. Jamie, his channel is called Life of Vinyl. Great guy, he's doing some really interesting videos, finding some nice new takes on things. He's got a great collection, good taste in music, nice presentation style. He does all his videos from his conservatory with a very attractive mosaic um, tiled pattern behind him. And uh, he's been making videos for a fair while now. He's been commenting on videos for a long time. I think he's finally decided to take the plunge. So do check him out, give him a sub, Watch what he's got to offer. I will put the link in the description down below so you can go and check him out. Jamie, Life of Vinyl. All right, folks, thanks for watching. I'll be back soon for more fun and games. In the meantime, look after yourselves, take care, and see you soon.